Ashley W. And I'm Ashley M. And this is our program, the African Diaspora Series, Part 1, History. So the concept of the African Diaspora is very broad. We're going to include a few key points about it, as well as how the African Diaspora has had an impact on the United States. Yeah. Right. African Diaspora encompasses many communities of people of African descent. These communities have dispersed throughout the world due to historical movements and migrations like the transatlantic and Arab or trans-Saharan slave trade. These migrations include more than just the U.S. So why does the history of the African diaspora matter? Because those who do not learn from history are doomed to repeat it. There's a lot of talk about how younger generations don't quote unquote know their history, but there's so much for us to learn and that's what this program is all about. Africa is not a monolithic society or entity. It contains a rich history with a multitude of tribes, languages, and customs. That history has shaped the U.S. in many ways. Learning more about Africa's origins can help strengthen our knowledge and understanding of different communities, both in the U.S. and globally. The early origins of Africa reveal a lot about the origin of humankind. Evidence that the first humans originated from Africa continues to grow. Early smaller migrations indicate that Africans traveled to other countries through various land and ocean routes from places like Greece to over into Asia. In 1987, another study compared DNA from different populations around the world and discovered what they called the mitochondrial Eve. No, not from Adam and Eve. Instead, she's the maternal ancestor whose genetic code indicates she lived in Africa and is the most recent ancestor to all living humans. So, ding, ding, ding. <laughs> Ashley, how about a little quiz round? Okay. Where did the first Homo sapien originate from? A. Greece, B, Morocco, or C, Nigeria? The answer is B, Morocco. With the plethora of different tribes and ethnic groups spread throughout the continent, several African empires emerged. While lesser known, they made significant contributions to society, including... So, for astronomy, the Egyptians were known for charting the movement of the sun and constellations, However, they are not the only place known for their discoveries. The African Stonehenge in present-day Kenya was known to be an accurate calendar, and the Dogon people of Mali were known for their astronomical observations. Research would later show that they made early observations of the Milky Way, including Saturn's rings and Jupiter's moons. African countries were also known for making early advancements in math from the Zari numeration system and the Yoruba numeration system, as well as algebraic equations. Many medical procedures were performed in ancient Africa before they were ever performed in Europe, including vaccination, anesthesia, brain surgery, and setting bones. Another reason for those early smaller migrations is that they had a ton of waterways and trade routes, as well as making a variety of boats and sailing vessels. And for our next question, which of these are African empires? A, the Great Zimbabwe, B, the Mali Empire, C, Carthage, or D, all of the above? And the answer is all of the above. Yay! And we're going to go over a few of those with you. First, the Mali Empire. The Mali Empire was located in West Africa in the 1200s. Famous rulers... Um, were known for helping them amass their wealthy empire, and it eventually rivaled the Mongolian Empire. It was home to Timbuktu's University Library, which held over 700,000 manuscripts, as well as the Great Mosque of Timbuktu as well. Carthage was located in North Africa sometime during the 8th century and lasted for over 500 years. It was known as a commercial hub with a protected harbor, and this is where those boats we were talking about came in because they had a lot of commercial routes and boats that they used to get around as well as to do trading. Um, they did extensive trading in gold and other metals. They were also so powerful that they were Rome's rival during the Punic Wars. The Great Zimbabwe was located in Botswana, Zimbabwe, and Mozambique between the 13th and the 15th century. It was an architectural marvel with stone towers and a rock citadel. 
with a profitable trade route. It also served as the location of several ancient artifacts like Chinese pottery and, and Arabian glass. The Rock Citadel in particular has been the subject of myths and legends, including that it was the residence of the biblical Queen of Sheba. Kingdom of Kush was located in Nubia, now northern Sudan, between 1070 BCE and lasted over 1400 years. Kushites were famous for their female rulers, queens known as Kandakes. There were several notable Kandakes. The first known Kandake reigned with full power and apparently without a king from 170 to 160 BC. Another one ruled from about 40 BC to 10 BC and was known as the Great Queen for her leadership of the Kushite armies in a five-year war against Rome. And they were a rival to Egypt and ruled there during Egypt's 25th dynasty. And they had their own language and script. All right, and for our last one is the Songhai Empire, which was located in West Africa during the 15th to 16th centuries. They came to power after the Mali Empire, conquering many of the areas that they did. This empire was known for blending both West African beliefs and Islamic beliefs as well, with an extensive cavalry and advanced military tactics. The Songhai infantry numbered 30,000 men and a cavalry of 10,000 skilled horsemen. If you're interested in delving any further into the African empires, here are some other notable ones that you could research. The Kingdom of Aksum, the Land of Punt, Matapa Empire, and the Kingdom of Benin. As the world's second largest continent, Africa currently has over 50 countries and accounts for about 16% of the world's population. The continent is so vast that there are thousands of tribes within Africa. Some of the biggest tribes are Hausa, and which is a huge tribe with an estimated population of 74 million. While most of them seem to be in Nigeria, there is a sizable number in Niger, Benin, Ivory Coast, Sudan, Ghana, Chad, Togo, and they speak their own language, Igbo. And they consist of 45 million people. They are ba also based in modern day Nigeria and make up about 18% of the population. Yoruba is third in the list of the 10 largest tribes of Africa and consists of about 47 million people. This diversity also translates over into spoken languages, leading to a higher number of multilingual citizens within Africa. South Africa alone has at least 10 official languages, including English, Afrikaans, and Zulu. These different tribes and groups also had their own special customs. Here's a few. Bull jumping. Forget bull fighting. In Ethiopia, this coming of age tradition is a three day rite of passage for young men that involves walking over 15 bulls. It symbolizes that they are now adults and ready for marriage. In the healing dance of San, led by healers and elders, this trance dance takes place in front of a fire and is a sacred tradition that allows the San people to connect with the spirit world. There are also tons of courtship customs among the tribes. The one listed here is known for honoring the bride. The groom's mother will often create a special beaded apron for her to wear. The other married woman at the wedding ceremony will wear similar garbs in solidarity. Many tribes were also very talented in the arts. So the red okra of the Himba was a homemade paste made of butter, fat, and red okra. This makeup gives the women of the tribe a red tinged skin that they are iconic for. The Maasai Shuka is a clothing worn among the tribe that is believed to help protect them from wild animals. The colors they use are often red, blue, and orange because they symbolize different things. Zulu beadwork is intricate and with patterns and colors rich with symbolism. And the Bushmen rock artwork date back thousands of years and can be found in caves and rock overhangs all over the country. While there was slave trading in early African societies, the supply and demand for slaves escalated during the period of enlightenment. The boom in societal advancements led to a higher demand of slaves. These slave trades led to massive migrations of Africans to other countries, including Britain, Brazil, Colombia, and India. However, Africans that were sold into slavery were not passive and did lead resistance movements. So these are a few of the slave revolutions around the world, from the Haitian Revolution, the Zanj Rebellion in what is now present day of southern Iraq, the Gaspar Yanga Rebellion in Veracruz, Mexico during Spanish rule, 
as well as the Baptist War in Jamaica. Meanwhile, in the U.S., the Underground Railroad and abolitionist movement became a driving force in the efforts to free slaves. Can you guess who this person is? This woman was an escaped slave who became a conductor of the Underground Railroad, leading slaves to freedom before the Civil War, all while carrying a bounty on her head. However, she once claimed, I never ran my train off the track and I never lost a passenger. Do you know who she is? She was Harriet Tubman. This is another guess who. This person was the leader of the Haitian independence movement during the French Revolution. They are known for helping in the emancipation of the slaves, improving the economic status of the colony, and advocating for it to be governed by former black slaves. Ooh, ooh, I know the answer, Ashley. Can Maybe. I answer? Maybe. Let's see who it is. Toussaint Louverture. Well, we could go into more detail about slavery, the situations that caused it, and how it eventually led to the slaves' freedom in various countries. I also think it's important to talk about the impact on slavery. Even today, the impact of slavery is still present. From legislation related to segregation still being found in old, obscure laws, to ongoing discussions about the state of the world. Discourse around the effects of slavery on the African-American community in the U.S. now includes topics like cognitive dissonance. So, that conflict between our belief systems versus the surrounding reality, such as proclaiming universal human rights, while there are still civil injustices going on now. There is also discussion about historical and intergenerational trauma. So, similar to Holocaust survivors, families that underwent slavery are still living through that trauma and, and coming to terms with it. So today, the times of slavery may feel like a distant memory for some, but we would not have made it this far without the fight and progress that people made during the times of slavery, as well as the civil rights movement. Now, you've probably already learned a lot about this in school, and these time periods, but here's a quick recap. Ashley, can you play the highlight reel? Oh, sure. I'd be happy to. That was your crash course in U.S. history. We hope you enjoyed it. But now here's a few trivia questions about civil rights movements in other places that involve the African diaspora. Ashley, take it away. What was the movement to establish independence for African nations called? A, Rastafari movement, B, the Pan-African movement, or C, Reconstruction? If you guessed the B, Pan-African movement, you'd be correct. Yay! Next one. <laughs> what year did Ghana gain its independence from Britain? A, 1945, B, 1964, or C, 1957? C, 1957. No, one last guess who round. This person was a black nationalist who helped in end apartheid in South Africa. In a pivotal speech, he proclaimed, the time comes in the life of any nation when there remain only two choices, submit or fight. That time has now come to South Africa. This activist later became the country's first black president. And that is Nelson Mandela. Yet all of these monumental aspects are only part of the story. The African diaspora continues to expand and its history of resistance in the name of progress continues today. For the U.S., conversations around the history of African Americans also keeps evolving with open discussions on some important and sometimes controversial topics. Here are a few. Black Lives Matter. The LGBTQIA plus rights within the black community. Systemic equality, prison reform, colorism, media representation, 
the misogynoir, the discrimination of black women in particular. So what's that? Do you want even more history? So did you also know black American sign language developed during segregation? That the Old West had black cowboys like Nat Love? There were historically black towns like Greenwood, which was also nicknamed Black Wall Street. The black drag ball scene was and still is a big deal. So if your brain is full of all of the information we've provided, um, hopefully it's been a fun experience. If you want to find even more resources, these are some for you. So, Ashley? The Black History Book, Big Ideas Simply Explained. Joy Degrees, Post-Traumatic Slave Syndrome. ThinkAfrica.net. BlackPast.org. National Geographic. And Encyclopedia Britannica. If this program has made you nostalgic about finding out more about your African roots, there's always genealogy. Several of these are provided by the library, like Ancestry.com, Oxford African American Studies Center, and Heritage Quest. Also, Freedmen's Bureau Records is known for its more extensive database about Black people living during slavery. If you want to find out what areas you might be from, you can do DNA tracing services like 23andMe and Ancestry.com. If you want to look beyond the textbooks, you can visit a museum. All of these are located in Georgia. Mm -hmm. Such as the Apex Museum, the King Center, the Ralph Mark Gilbert Civil Rights Museum, which is located in Savannah. You can also volunteer at organizations led by the African community. Or celebrate traditional African holidays like Kwanzaa or Juneteenth. And there's always learning a language. The options are endless from Swahili, Creole, Zulu, and Black American Sign Language. We hope you've enjoyed this program. And if you did, there will be a part two coming out about African mythology and literature. Stay tuned to our YouTube channel for that. Mm -hmm. And also check out the GCPL YouTube channel for more programs like this. Thank you for watching. Thanks. Bye.